Hello again, I'm Juan Antonio Fernandez, professor at CBS. In the last episode, we talked about how to create a culture of innovation. In this episode, we are going to explore norms and systems and how important they are to create that culture. Values are fundamental for the culture. Those values are visible through the organization norms and systems. Dr. Penn from Intel told me that most organizations have visions they want to achieve. It is like the North Pole in the sky, they guide them. You also then need talent to achieve that vision. But before you need to have the systems and norms in place that fit with those values and attract and retain those talents. In this episode, I'm going to talk about six steps that are important for the norms and systems. The first one is vertical and horizontal communication. The organization has to facilitate communication in every direction, so they can be flow of ideas in both directions, top-down, bottom-up, or sideways. For example, Kenneth Yu at 3M told me this story that happens to him. A new employee joined 3M, and she had an idea that shared with her supervisor. The supervisor told her, I think it's an interesting idea, why don't you ask an appointment with the CEO? So the new employee was very surprised. They said, an appointment with the CEO? Yes, yes, yes. Go talk with the secretary, ask for an appointment. So she did it. She went to the secretary. The secretary said, let me ask the CEO. I said, yes, come in. So she went inside the office, told him about the idea, and Kenny said, it's very interesting. Tell your boss to do it. This is an example of how fluid communication among different levels make these ideas that are not lost. They can be implemented. Now, to facilitate horizontal communication, one way is to have cross-functional teams. Chief Eng Chang, the general manager of Hotbeds, reduced the organizational levels to allow for faster flow of ideas among the different departments. Also important to empower your people. An example that gave me David Ferreira, CEO of Discovery, an insurance company, told me that when he joined uh, Discovery, he has conversations with different top executives. He met one of these top executives that later become the CEO of uh, Discovery and asked him two questions. The question is, what should I do to be successful at uh, Discovery and what shouldn't do? And the answer was very interesting. To the question, what should I do? The executive told him, always express your opinion. And to the question, what should not do? He said, there is nothing you should not do. That is a great example of empowering. The second point, reward and KPIs. An executive I, I talked with he told me that uh, rewards should be simple and straightforward to avoid mixed priorities with complicated rewards that nobody understands. Jerry Liu, CEO of Cargill China, told me that his company modified the KPIs to include innovation and new clients' growth. Third point is called innovation. Companies should be close to the market and the users. Kenneth Yu told me that if you have a problem and you don't have an answer, go and ask the customer. David Wang, CEO of Buller China, a Swiss company, told me that uh, the company has 12 research centers over the world that work closely with the clients, developing solutions to problems they have. And Jerry Liu from Cargill told me that they cooperate with the clients, developing new products that fit their needs. Number four, quick project approval. Song Huan told me that uh, he uses VC investment managers to evaluate and approve projects in his company. He asked them, would you invest in this project? If they say yes, he go ahead with the project. And from the point of view of the uh, employees that propose ideas, projects to them, this is an extra motivation because they know they are going to be evaluated with objective standards, not by internal company politics. The motivation is very high. Number five, fair project evaluation. One executive shared with me the five-step model they use in her company. Number one, does the project have a potential to have a positive impact in our PLL account? Second, if it failed, did we overestimate the skill of the people involved? Did we allocate enough resources to the project? Number three, was the project ahead of its time? Number four, was the failure avoidable? Number five, did the shareholders understand the responsibilities in the final result? And the last point, partnership. Companies invest and acquire companies that have developed technologies, products, and services that fit with their strategy. 
Jerry Liu from Kankil told me that his company has a hundred million US dollar fund to invest and acquire new companies. They allow these newly acquired companies to run independently until they are mature before Cargill's management takes over. So norms and systems, we talk about this vertical and horizontal communication to allow rapid communication in all directions, include innovation and parts of the rewards and KPIs, co-innovate with your users, quick project approval and avoid internal politics, fair project evaluation, learn from failures, and partnership, invest and acquire new ventures. With this, we finish the third episode. In the next episode, we will talk about leadership. Don't miss it.